Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. NASA's James Hansen said that in order for the climate to be safe, we have to keep atmospheric CO2 levels below 350 parts per million. So I asked perplexity.ai if CO2 levels were safe in the year 1791. Perplexity.ai says that Dr. James Hansen is a renowned climatologist and that he would consider atmospheric CO2 levels from the year 1791 to be safe. So let's take a look at what was going on during the safe year of 1791. There was a flood in Asheville, North Carolina during April 1791 where the water got 26 feet deep, about the same as this year. During the year 1791, San Diego, California received no rainfall at all. The eastern U.S. was also experiencing a severe drought during the year 1791. During 1790, no rain is said to have fallen around Sydney, Australia from June to November. All grass was dried up. In January and February 1791, after several months of excessive heat and hot winds, birds dropped dead from the trees. Everything burnt up. Water supply in Sydney nearly exhausted. The 14th deadliest Atlantic hurricane killed 3,000 people in Cuba during June 1791. Climatologists now say that June sea surface temperatures are too low to generally produce this sort of catastrophic major hurricane. Also note that 8 of the 25 deadliest Atlantic hurricanes occurred right around the time of the Revolutionary War. George Washington took office as the first President of the United States in Philadelphia during January 1790. That was also the warmest January on record in Philadelphia. The mercury often ran up to 70 degrees in the shade at midday. Boys were often seen swimming in the rivers. So during James Hansen's safe climate of 1791, we had catastrophic floods, catastrophic droughts, catastrophic hurricanes, and unprecedented winter heat waves. An intelligent person could come to the conclusion that lowering atmospheric CO2 levels will not prevent extreme weather. But apparently being a renowned climatologist doesn't require a whole lot of intelligence. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on junk climate science for more than 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.